What's up guys, welcome back. We have a very special episode for you guys. Well, we got a call last night. Yes. Uh, they asked us if we wanted to come check out something special and it would be an exclusive, I think. Fuck yes, and we do have the Taiwan exclusive, so you guys will be seeing this faster than everyone else. You guys will be excited. Just, just faster than everybody else, yeah. okay? But we're at McLaren Taiwan, and as you can tell, the Artura. It's not right here, but we're gonna get in there. So, so come on, let's let's go. Let's, let's get, go. Let's, 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 let's get go this. Look well, this is the car right here. I am very, very excited. It is you know, you know, look. So I think it's gonna be tricky because this is gonna be a base model for what cars are gonna be in the next. 10, 20, 30 years. So this is not new technology. The P1, the 918, the LaFerrari all have some sort of this type of setup. But this is the first time that they've gone to like a kind of like an entry level. You know what I'm saying? Today celebrates the end of an era. Yeah. Definitely. And the beginning of a new era definitely. and what's to come. Yeah, we were talking about this on the phone the other day, right? Yeah. We were like, hey, you know, this is exhausts and all this could be coming to an end yeah. in like 20 years. Like, can you even I, imagine that? Just, Oh man, like I, right? I don't know. Like, l let me know what you guys think yeah. about all this because this is big news. Yeah. You know, like everyone's gonna follow suit. The next would be Porsche, Ferrari, Lamborghini. Lamborghini. Like everyone else is gonna be doing these hybrids. Yeah. So this is definitely where everybody's gonna go, and I'm very excited to see what McLaren actually did with this. Hey, without further ado, let's lift this, and we will get into all the specs and details and all the information that you guys will want to know. Okay, so I am so happy they did not change anything on the steering wheel because that's what makes a McLaren steering wheel different. There is no Manitino settings. There's just the shifters and the steering wheel. Um, obviously, this is very, very different. I do see the toggles are here now. One is for the drivetrain, one's for the suspension, and then you have the manual settings and the ESC off. So everything is here. I guess it would be more driver focused, driver oriented. So you can change the settings on the go while you're driving and you're still staying focused. And this is more driver oriented as well. So I guess they kind of slanted the design of the screen. Dude, this is my favorite, man. This yeah, so, so these cool. toggles are yeah. Here. So you, just, you know, it, so yeah, you, you just know, have to drive and you can shift, shift. You know everything. I think that's a great. Uh, yeah, I think that's game changer, man. So I do know that the steering is still hydraulic. Yes. So they didn't change anything about that, and I think that's what's so good about the McLaren and the steering feel. These seats these, are these actually are, more comfortable than the center seats. These are these are new too. Yeah, right? I really like these. And then in the carbon. Yeah. So these are the okay. Club Sport bucket seats, carbon back. It's one piece. It's literally a bucket seat, but. It's electronic. It's, it, it's, it's got it's got lumbar support. It's, got, it's also got tilt. Like I can tilt up or down. This is like the most comfortable bucket seat I've ever sat in. This was first implemented on the 720. This is the variable drift control. So that basically, really cool. it allows you to set how much it allow. It, it kind of lets you slide the the tail out. I think what's cool about this mid-engine car, or at least the 570, the 600 LTs, and the 720s is that you feel like it's a go-kart and the effect is not the tail going out. It's kind of like just the middle part, the body of the car kind of just drifting a little bit. But that is a very, very cool function to have. Exactly, here. exactly. Yeah. Um, we will talk about the engine and the motor and the e-motor later, but just some power specs. I think it's around, what, 680 PS? 680 PS at 720 Newton meters. And what's what's special is uh, what you said, right? It, it comes out at like- two, It comes out at 2,000 or 2,200 RPM. All the way to 7,000. Yeah, so that means that there's pretty much no turbo lag because if you just drive it around town, you're usually like around 2,000 RPM. So that means it's like on full blast. Yeah, yeah. It, it is very interesting how the hybrid engine works just, you know, on full boost literally at 2,250 RPM. And yeah. that, that is quite special. I think 
from what I see so far, they're setting the bar pretty high with this. With, with yeah. this with this uh, hybrid mid-engine supercar, you know what I'm saying? Well, I mean, I heard that the price for this, almost 13 million NTD, mm -hmm. that would be right below the 600 LT and right above the 570S. But I heard that it's slated above the GT and below the 720S. But you know, the 570 and the 600s, there's no more. So I guess it would be replacing that category. Exactly. Yeah, well, let's take a look at yeah, the Yeah, let's, 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 let's go outside. outside. So the new carbon chassis that is fabricated by McLaren is called the MCLA. And then that is actually connected to the battery pack, which is made from lithium. And then it is connected to the engine, and then the e-motor, and then the transmission. The eight-speed transmission, this brand new spanking transmission. I do have to say, hybrids are usually heavier because of the battery packs and the e-motor, but I think that given that there's more power, uh, the numbers are actually a little bit better than the 570S. I'm talking about performance numbers. So. Um, but it sits slightly right under the 600 LT. Uh, I remember zero to 200 is about 8.3 seconds. 8.3 seconds. So that is just like a tick slower than the 600 LT, but it's a little bit faster than 570S. Yeah. Well, I mean, this car, the dry weight is just south of 1400 kg. Oh. And, you know, the wet weight would be close to, I think it's like 1480, 1490 kg. Not bad, considering how heavy cars are nowadays. Yeah, right. I really like the laser cut, honeycomb cutouts. I mean, I guess they need it for ventilation from the heat of the engine, kind of like a ducktail shape. This whole thing, this one piece, one piece. I think supercars, that you have to go as much this way as possible. You know, you less bolts, less glue, you know, less anything, right? You want, yeah. you want it to just kind of like come together, you know? So they do have these special P0 Corsa tires on it. The size is actually still 19 in the front and 20s in the rear. I always felt like McLarens have been conservative on the sizing of the wheels and the width of the wheels, but I'm sure they have a reason. They have a winning heritage, but you know what? I love the fenders and I love these gills. These vents do look really, really dope. I think that if they come out with a carbon fiber option, it would look even sicker, just like on my 600 LT. I do see that, you know, there's a couple things that I would just trick out with carbon fiber on the exterior, because I, I love carbon fiber. I'm still so pumped that I'm getting to see this firsthand, and I'm, I'm touching it. I'm touching it. <laughs> I feel like that creeper. I'm perving out over this. There's three clutches. Oh, really? This is triple clutch. It's a triple clutch. Because the third clutch is for the e-motor. So the reverse runs off of the e-motor only. Okay. Right. So I think this is, this is, this is, there's a lot of Wow, it's a, it's a little mind baffling. But, and, and I also heard that there's a EV mode. Like you can actually shut the engine yeah, you off. Yeah, 30 km, like 30 km the, 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 the range. I, I don't know, man. I'm still like kind of like mind blown a little bit. Oh man, <laughs> this is. Uh, the future is like just, just kind of just shit in my face, you know? Yeah. I was like, this is the future. I don't know what everybody else is gonna do. Like, I don't know. Is, I'm very anxious to see what Porsche and Lambo and Ferrari does. You know? Okay, well, hey, I, I have a thing for holes. And, uh, this is quite big. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I always look at the intake vents here. It's just the radiator inside this vent and uh, I am touching the radiator. So this is a V6 twin turbo. Before the V6 or the V8 was about 90 degrees. So 90 degrees would be like this. This time they made it 120, 120 degrees, all right? So it would be a little bit more flat, a little bit wider. The weight distribution would be a little bit lower. It would be better theoretically. You know, this time there's an e-motor in here and the battery pack. So obviously there's more weight, but they did use a lot more aluminum 
around the car and there's a new carbon fiber chassis, which we just talked about. So I, I am very, very eager to drive this. I want to test drive this so bad. I really can't wait. I think that this car is going to be a very competitive mid-engine hybrid supercar. McLaren is going into their 10th or 11th year as a car manufacturer. And with all of their knowledge and all of their experience and all of their racing heritage and everything they learned from F1, it just makes sense now. You see the growth of McLaren. You see where they're going and you see that they're leading not just following the pack now. And I think that is what is important for the Artura. And you know, everyone else is gonna follow suit. It's on. The hybrid wars is on. The headlights, just like Ryan said, it's very 720-ish, but um, it's a lot thinner now. And it's sunken in, so it looks more menacing. And there's obviously this LED daytime running light here that's very cool and this design actually goes back to the rear tail lights so let's check out the rear tail lights they did away with the mclaren logo designs of that ufo shape so this is just a super thin red led stripe i mean literally just i would say not even like four centimeters it's kind of just makes the car just clamp down a little more let me show you guys where we plug it in So here we have it. This is the future. I'm gonna plug this in and you can just kind of plug it into the wall. 110 to 240V, I'm just plugging it at home. You don't need a charging station. All you need is some cords. Plug it in, bro. And this plug, I wanna plug, plug it in. in. <laughs> um, that wasn't, all right, don't worry about me. That is pretty cool, I have to admit that. And uh, I'm gonna give these wires back because I look like a dumbass right now. So the suspension is pretty much unchanged. It's still got the independent adaptive dampers. It's got the double aluminum wishbones. And you know, that, like you don't wanna change that. If something is good, don't mess with it. So there is a change for the rear. So the rear actually has an upper wishbone and a lower multi-link setup. That is the difference. So the ceramic brakes are a standard. They will not be an option. Hey, you can't go wrong with ceramics. It's 390 millimeters in the front. 380 in the rear. Six pistons in the front, four in the rear. That's way more than enough. I do know that AP Racing makes the calipers for them. They just stop on the dime. The 600 LT is just, I still love it. I drive it almost every day still, but the seats on this are just way more comfortable. Anyway, let's go. I've just asked McLaren Taiwan if we can start the car and just to hear it. There's no guarantee. This it, is the- It's a demo mode right now. It's so, a demo mode. Yeah, and it's so. kind of like the pre-production model. So there's no guarantees, but let, let's just try it. You know, hold our breath. Let's, let's, try let's go start. Let's go. Uh, no, how do you want? How hey, this was the Taiwan exclusive from God to start. How lucky are we? Before we end this really dope ass vlog for you guys, we do want to talk about a couple of things. Yeah, I mean, I'm very curious, like I said earlier, of uh, where this is all going. I think they want to use this new technology to try to mimic that pure driving experience, right? Of a naturally aspirated car. And I'm very curious as to how they've done it. Obviously we know they've done a great job with the hypercars, but that's a different price tag, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So how they, transition this to an entry-level mid-engine supercar, I'm very, very curious. Yeah, you we're gonna have to come back and test drive it. Yeah, we got it, man, we got it. Yeah, I mean, this would be, you know, the go-to car 
and it's eco-friendly. Yeah. You know, so I guess what all these car makers and all these regulations and the laws is that it's just trying to cut down emissions mm -hmm. and just trying to make everything more eco-friendly and more sustainable. Yeah, we gotta know? go fast, but we also gotta save planet Earth, right? So this is this is the future. Let's keep our eyes glued and uh, we will see how this all all pans out. Yeah, man, hey. This is this awesome. Is, this is really good. Uh, we hope that you guys enjoyed this Taiwan exclusive of the McLaren Artura. Can someone tell me why it's called Artura? Uh, yes, I don't know. Do you, why is it called Artura? you guys know why it's called the Artura? Let us know, okay? Okay, if you know, so if you got the right answers, we will send you some free gifts from EMC. All okay. right, let us know what Artura means. And uh, hope you guys like this vlog. If you want to see more of Ryan and I reviewing these new badass cars, let us know. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace. All right.